Hi guys, I have been on Facebook Live this week um, and on the podcast talking about the equinox on Monday and the alignment of the great conjunction and what that means Um, and I've also done a podcast on it and I wanted to come into your inbox today to kind of pull all that together to give you a way of working with the energies in a gentle and personalized way. So I'm kind of putting everything together in one video. So in this video, I'm going to talk really, really briefly about what the alignment is, what the ancients have said and um, about the most effective way of working with these energies and how to do that. And then also at the end, I'm going to lead you through a way of working with any blocks that are getting in the way. So by the time we get to the end of the video, you'll know what I mean. I just wanted to add something at the end that was tangible and practical for you. So let me get to it because I don't want to take up um, too much time in introducing these energies. So basically, I think if you've been following me for long enough, you will know that I don't usually work with anything that is prescriptive. So I don't normally work with planetary alignments. I don't pay any attention to Mercury retrograde. I've got no disrespect for it. And anybody that wants to work in that way, they probably know more than I do, (laughs) but it just doesn't resonate with me. I am a firm believer that I am creating everything that I experience and then everything is available to me in any given moment, whether I know it or not. And a lot of the times I just don't know it. But I do work with equinoxes because years ago I started feeling those energies. And so because I trust my own direct experience over any spiritual truths, I got drawn to it and started working with equinoxes, started working with sabbats and rhythms, and that taught me a lot. What was particularly different about this equinox is the energies felt different a couple of weeks ago. So it feels accelerated this time. Um, There's always an element of um, light and delight with every equinox for me. Always um, a a sense of possibility. No matter what time of the year they happen to fall, there's always an energy of potential and excitement. This one felt really different. And I started to pay attention to that and then a friend of mine started telling me about this great alignment that was happening and I was thinking okay I think I need to pay attention to this the last time I paid attention to an alignment of this magnitude was the um, great harmonic or the grand harmonic um crikey in the early 20 in early 2000s I think anyway so Basically, you if there are a lot better articles than uh, um, than with information, more information than I'm, I'm going to go into detail right now, and with a lot more knowledge than me. But basically, Saturn and Jupiter are coming into alignment, and on the twenty first, this only happens every twenty years or so, and to and it's not happened at this time of year and it's not happened in Aquarius, the alignment in Aquarius has not happened for hundreds of years. In fact, the last time that this happened, it ushered in a cultural shift that we called the Renaissance period. So astrologers are saying that this alignment may well be what we've known as the Christmas star. So there's a lot of excitement around it. And astrologers are saying that this is the beginning of the age of Aquarius. Some astrologers say it's not going to be around for a long time yet, the age of Aquarius, and some astrologers are saying it's always been. But there is something significant about this shift, and collectively we are calling for change, really, at some of the most basic, systematic, fundamental levels, aren't we? So, If you feel resonant with it, if you feel drawn to it, here's some invitations, here's some offerings about how to work with it. So what is this offering us? Well, every equinox, in my opinion, offers us the chance for 
allowing in more light, allowing in more awareness, allowing in more self-reflection, a deeper level of understanding, and also clearing out limitations and old identities that are no longer serving us. It's a time of transition and change. And a lot of people use the equinoxes to work with planning, you know, um, checking in with their dreams, seeing if any of them have changed, any of them are shifts, their plans, their creative, um, where their creative juices want them to be flowing. So in some ways, it's no different from that. It's just that this time, I think there's a collective oomph about it. And I know when I've been speaking to colleagues and peers, the things that we are noticing is it's a it's a creative energy. So what I mean by that is there's some chaos that comes with it, like there is with any creativity. It gets messy for a while. And so people experience that as um, feeling some highs and then feeling some lows, feeling some, whoa, new possibilities, and then feeling like, whoa, there's some old stuff that needs to be cleared out. And, and depending where you are on with your journey with that, how much of your time and energy and focus you've already invested in making some of those shifts, um, then that'll affect how much chaotic it kind of feels. But most people that I know that are probably like you and have been um, in a personal or spiritual development or expansive process for a few a number of years are finding like a real steady beat in this like there's an opportunity for really just steady grounded shifts and change and I mean this is the year for those of us that are healers coaches change makers light workers whatever you want those, those of us that either feel like we're misfits or leading edge depending on how lonely we feel at the time so for those of us that feel like we're here to really make a difference and to be a presence of love in the world, I think this is really our time. Like, this is it, guys. This is go time. So I'm just really excited. I personally, I have been rooting out old beliefs. I cleared I'm not good enough the other day. I didn't realize I could completely clear that. And I didn't realize that. I did realize that <laughs> until it went. Um... So I think the opportunity for really pulling out all the roots of limitations are available right now. So let me just tell you what the A's have been saying, the ancients. If you're getting this video, you should know that I've been working with a collective called the ancients for several years now. I'm sure you all do, but I thought I'd say it just in case. So I go into this in more detail on the podcast that you can find over at coralwild.com and I channel on the podcast the ancients and um, what they've said about this right so let me just say to start off with the ancients always say you don't have to wait for an equinox to make the change in your life like you're more powerful than that and the energies beyond the portal are always available to you you know outside of this portal right now they are always available to you but make the most of this everybody's focused on it you know, a lot of us not everybody but a lot of us are focused on the potential there's a field of possibility that is around at sabbats that's not around during the year so collectively I think we can make bigger and deeper shifts together it's the reason I'm doing this video and the ancients have said two main things about the working with these energies of light and letting this what they call the possibility of delight of wonder and awe and, and gentleness and ease and creativity that's available there's two main things to take into account the most important quality to work with at this time is the quality of integrity and the a's quickly come in with normally when we think of an integrity and where and we think where we're at out of alignment in our integrity 
we normally start to criticize ourselves you know and and the self-talk becomes where am I doing it wrong where am I letting myself down where am I feeling uncomfortable and there's no morality in integrity so the ancients describe integrity as your truth in motion and truth is multifaceted isn't it but if we think about integrity in terms of your wholeness so the a's go on to say where are you out of alignment with integrity like what parts of yourself are you suppressing what parts of yourself are you denying and that's the light shadow and the dark shadow so that's the parts that we feel uncomfortable with that we feel like we shouldn't have and then there's the parts of us that we are inspired to be but don't think we're capable of and that scares us just as much if not more so the I think one of the easiest ways to work with this is to stop yourself from going into overwhelm and just just do it tiny a tiny tiny piece of work so I would encourage you to just sit down and just say to yourself what areas of my life feel where I feel like I'm out of living out of alignment with my truth and the first step actually the first bit before that is we need to remember the truth of who we are is a divine being having a spiritual having a physical experience we are love that's the truth we are love and we are loved as the ancients say in the podcast you are already cherished you are an important part of the divine blueprint. You are necessary, you are wanted, and you are utterly, utterly safe. You, the source's next best thought. Collectively, there was a cry out for something just before you were born. And source said, I've got a so-and-so for that. You're here to fulfill some kind of collective need. And the clue to what that need is, or your purpose, is to follow your joy. But that's for a whole other video. And now, it's like when you look at your life, where are you out of alignment with that truth of you being a divine being of love? Here to experience joy, bliss, peace, happiness. Where, what elements do you, what elements of your life feel broken to you in some way right now? that feel that you're at the center and say your work is over here and does that link between the two feel strong or a bit broken in some way? And when you do this, be really, really gentle on yourself. And I would try and get to beneath the behaviors and look beneath the superficial and just look at what needs you're trying to meet? What behaviours are you you employed in that just don't feel right to you when you're being honest with yourself, when you're being really truthful and you think about the wholeness of your being? So are you watching too much Netflix? <laughs> are you using that to numb, to avoid this greater creativity that's wanting to come into your life? Are you smoking and you don't want to are you not moving your body as much as you would want to are your friendships not feeling comfortable to you where are you out of integrity with your wholeness and then you might want to you, you know you might just want to think about that you might want to make some notes about that and you might want to write those down and the next step is really being at peace with that like letting that be okay letting that be okay right now because bliss as aurora used to tell me is complete acceptance of the now whilst fully excited about the potential of the next steps the potential of tomorrow so that radical self-acceptance needs to be our first step 
towards the inner peace and there's various ways of working with that and I'm going to show you one of those in just a moment. So the first step is recognizing your integrity and your relationship with integrity going forward. Integrity is not a sense of doing right or wrong, it's just about whether you are in com whether you are at complete peace with how you're living your life right now. Does it feel right to you? And that can be ever changing because truths always are. Truths are not static. So the next thing that the ancients say is to set your expectations before you do any healing work or any journey work or anything about aligning with these energies. Set your expectations. And their invitation is expect it to be easy, expect it to be delightful, expect it to be joyful. And when we think about healing and changing, we can be a little bit dramatic. And, and if it is dramatic, that's okay too. Whatever, whatever arises, love that. Whatever shows up, love that. But our expectations set our destination. They are huge, huge. I have a screensaver um, from something that the ancient said to me a while ago, which was expect the very best to happen. And we tend to think, well, you know, I don't want to do that in case I'm disappointed. I don't want to get my hopes up. And actually not wanting, not getting your hopes up is, is more harmful than getting your hopes up. Get your hopes up, set your expectations and set the expectations that this portal is going to be delightful for you. So we've covered what it is, how to best work with it in terms of the... Um, what's the word, in terms of the mechanics of it, and now the process. So the ancients have been talking to me for the whole of this year about something called the divine self and then the radiant self. And although it's too much to go into for this video, basically it's the divine self is kind of like, we tend to think about it as our soul qualities. And our radiant self is what I call our positive ego. It's like who we were born to be and who we were born to become. And the easiest way to get in touch with the DLI, your radiant self is to just think, what, you're here to be delighted by yourself. So when we think about being out of integrity, right now, this moment, either pause and go and do that process or just go with the flow of the next bit that happens. So where in your life are you not delighted with yourself? What aspect of your thoughts, behaviours or intentions does are you not delighted with yourself? So sometimes I feel like that about my anger. And I had an experience with this last night, actually. Um, I, hmm, I had some anger come up and I felt judgmental, but I was judging the judgmental part of me instead of just thinking I am like judgmental at times. That's what helps me be discerning. I need that aspect of my personality or else I become too naive and not discerning. And whenever I judge myself as being too judgmental, my pattern is to not be discerning. <laughs> So I remember noticing that and thinking, wasn't quite delighted with my judgmental self. And so I decided to be delighted with my judgment. I am just delighted with that judgment. And I really, really meant it and thanked that part of me for their positive intention and what they were trying to give to me. And so it then transformed I just became at peace with it and it was just useful information going forward. So what part of yourself or your life are you not delighted with at this moment in time? And then what I'm going to invite you to do in a moment is to bring that part or that aspect of your life into a healing process with me. 
I'm going to do a really general one here. When I work with people and one-to-one -one sessions, we go very specific and very deep and as far back as possible because that's what cleans the roots up really quick, really good and really well. But for now, so that we can, I can have the best impact on all of you that are listening, I'm going to do a really generalized one. Okay, so you take your time and pause this video if you need to and come back to it when you feel like you've got something that you're feeling not delighted with and bring it back to a healing circle. Okay, so... I'm going to close my eyes because I am going to go to the inner realms and I am going to guide you through a process that you can use over and over again, really general, to take the edge off whatever judgment or uncomfortable feelings are coming up for you right now. Okay. So as we start, know that you're not alone. You're connected with me and everybody else who's doing this at this moment in time. Place your attention on your heart. You might want to put your hand on your heart. And imagine connecting with me heart to heart. Know that I see you and I welcome you. and all of you is welcome. Imagine that you're connecting with hearts all over the globe and all over the world. Other heart-led beings who are doing this work. Feeling the collective call for more compassion Compassion for self first, compassion for others, and compassion for all. Remind yourself that you are a divine being, that you are love in motion, ever expanding, ever reaching out into more and more. Using whatever terminology feels right to you, call source energy to be present in this moment. Your guides, any unseen friends, unseen friends and beings of love that want to be with us now. And call in your own divine being. Feel the gentleness and the grounded, powerful presence that you are. And bring to mind your deep connectedness to the earth your sense of belonging in this planet, a welcome guest and fellow adventurer with earth consciousness, soul to soul, heart to heart, root to root, here, powerful, present, utterly safe and set the intention to align with the energies of the equinox of Aquarius and the great conjunction and allow it to be filled with ease. This process of healing should feel like you are kissing yourself on the cheek. A moment filled with beauty, with peace, 
and awe and wonder. Know that you are cherished. Know that you are loved. You are cherished. See if you can let that in. Life wants to love you. How can you let life love you? And as you are here in this moment, in this presence of being cherished and supported, connected, bring to mind something that feels out of alignment with your integrity, an area of yourself or your life that you are not fully delighted by. And you might want to imagine it as some kind of symbol or shape in front of you. Viewing it as a small childlike part of you that's just scared, a bit lonely. Some soul quality that's trying to get your attention. And it could be that it feels separate from you or fragmented in some way. And speak to it like you might do a small child and let it know that it's welcome, that it's loved. that it's accepted. And call in your guides, the ancients if you want to, source energy, the love of nature, whatever feels comfortable to you and whatever feels supportive and ask it to help help you resolve this issue, help it to heal the gap between it and you so that you can feel at peace with it. And I'll join you in creating a healing space for this aspect of yourself and your life. And we'll go quiet for a few moments while we allow Source and your unseen friends to resolve this issue. You may notice something change in your body or in the symbol. And while you're in this space, bring into your awareness and invite all the parts of your life that you wrote down. Anything that you placed on your list mentally or physically 
about where you feel that you're in out of alignment with your integrity and bring those qualities and those parts into this healing field. Just allow them to be loved by source. You just have to be willing to accept them and let source do the rest. Let them be welcome and be at peace with what is. and let that do its work. And you can repeat that as often as you like, just simply as you go about your day. So when it feels right, come out and come back to the now. So that's so simple and straightforward and can be really powerful on its own. And I can't tell you how powerful acceptance of the now is and self-acceptance is. It's transformative. And I invite you, whether you're going to do a full ceremony or whether you're just going to hold your intention lightly, that you'll connect with these energies that are available to you and to find why, ways to let life of you. To give yourself permission to be delighted by yourself and be delighted in who you are and let us see the gift that you are. As you go about your day, you may get an urge to repeat this process and you don't have to do it with your eyes closed in the way that we've just done it now. There can be something small and tiny that comes up and you can just invite Source to resolve this issue for you to just find peace in the moment. All right, so if you want to find out more, like I said on the, on the podcast, there's a lot more information. You can hear directly what the ancients have got to say with it. If you want some support in going deeper with that, then you can contact me at cara at carawild.com at C-A-R-A at C-A-R-A-W-I-L-D-E dot com and we can book a session or we can take it from there. Um, yeah, okay, that's it for now. Let me know how you get on. Let me know how you experience that. And this is probably the last time that you're going to hear from me before Christmas and the New Year. So... Wishing you so much love, so much peace and so much joy. Take care for now. Bye.